Hi, I'm Valentino Rossi and if you like our content, like and subscribe for more. Good morning to all MotoGP fans. The famous Red Bull Ring Bull seems to be watching over the circuit, which is about to be the stage for the Austrian Grand Prix. Just a few more moments and the images will take us to the starting straight for the MotoGP class race. So Bastianini is searching for a fourth win of the season and he launches from the head of the grid with the hat-trick chasing Bagnaia alongside him. Jack Miller rounds out the top three. The green flag then waves at the back. We are moments away from the start of the Austrian Grand Prix here in MotoGP. We're underway. And now Bastianini got away well from pole position. So did Pekka Bagnaia in the middle of that front row. Bagnaia will swing straight into the lead. The dream launch then from the manager going for three straight wins here in 2022. He's a little bit wide going into the first corner as he lost the drive now as they attack the first chicane. No, he hasn't. Bastianini just about holding on to second place from Miller. Quattararo is still where he started in fifth. Tell you, he didn't get a good start. Alasia Sparkaro was looking at the first seven or eight runners and he was not among them as they come through the first sector. He's battling there with John Zarco, who's also gone backwards off the line, Alicia Sparkaro down to 11, Sarko is down to 12. Everybody safely through them, that tight chicane then, 2A and 2B for the first time of asking. Pekka Bagnaia then made the dream launch off the line, he got the whole shot, that's exactly how he would have wanted it, plan A executed, uh, Pekka Bagnaia, is he going to get in a little bit hot? Bagnaia just comes straight back on the inside on the cutback. And Quattararo again was quicker than the leading pair, so there's going to be an interesting dynamic going on soon because Martin appears to have the superior pace of this trio of Ducatis. He's shown that to catch them. Can he now show it to pass them? And if they continue to run in formation like this, Quattararo is just ever so slightly a 10 for 2 per lap, closing in on this leading group. He did a 130.1 last time around. Quattararo for the first time is within two seconds of the race leader. Third place here in this Austrian Grand Prix, given how strong the Ducatis have been, would represent a fantastic result for Fabio Quattararo. It could get even better. Second would feel like a win, wouldn't it, under the circumstances on that factory Yamaha. He's really, really reeling in. Jack Miller over the line, then he got the gap down to three tenths of a second, having to ride his heart out here. Right by side, that sweep down to turn four. He's found a way through, although he's not going to give up this play, this set place, is he, without an almighty fight? In fact, he has rescued it back, which was a bit quicker than a lot of the riders directly ahead of him. Mistake, he's made the mistake then into 2A. And now Fabio Quattararo is going to be right on the rear tyre. Had to do that. We saw in uh, the Moto3 race earlier on a rider. Quattararo is in that Italian sandwich again, isn't he, that he talked about on Friday. Oh, he's got Look a at his great move. Up. Oh, brilliant by Fabio Quattararo. <laughs> you can see that coming a mile off. He set it up going into the chicane. Is he going to get outgunned on the climb up towards turn three? No, he's not. Miller oh. tries to hold on to third place. Unbelievably close action here in MotoGP. Fabio Quattararo now puts the factory in behind to second place. Miller third throughout in sector one, two. Somebody's gone down the chicane. Talk about the move of a world champion. That was opportunism from Quattararo. We didn't have that down as a potential overtaking spot, but what a move that was from Quattararo. And then he really had to break as late as he dared. Uh, the Moto3 race earlier on a rider go through there and not lose any time and got a long lap penalty. Martin knew he had to lose a bit of time through there, otherwise he could have got the same punishment. Yeah, well, he went into 2A, but it was not to be, was it? Put the left arm up there briefly. Fontanietto saw it, we saw it. There's his crew chief, Danny Ramagnoli, as well. Javier Quattro just streaking away from the Spaniard. What is going on on that Prima Pramac GP22? That's the closest he's been to Jack Miller as Binder gets up the inside. Tostring Grand Prix, given how strong the Ducatis have been, would represent a fantastic result for Fabio Quattro. It could get even better. Second would feel like a win, wouldn't it, under the circumstances on that factory Yamaha. He's really, really reeling in Jack Miller over the line, then he got the gap down to three tenths of a second, having to ride his heart out. It's in hot, though. The pressure's been building, and then finally, Luca, that means if you threw the checkered flag now, they 28 points behind Fabio Quattro in the championship. Quattro, though, once more. Had the move of a world champion. That was opportunism from Quattro. We didn't have that down as a potential overtaking spot, but what a move that was. 
course from Quattararo and then he really had to break as late as he dared into the turn three. His teammate is the man who brought those yellow flags out. So contrasting fortunes at the chicane for the two factory Yamaha riders. But Quattararo had to really get his elbows out into turn three as well. It's clear trek ahead of him now. This is a big lap. Can Quattararo break clear so the Ducatis cannot pass him down the straight? Pecco Bagnar, it is, will have an advantage of Fabio Quattro of eight tenths of a second. He couldn't, could he? Quattro <laughs> he couldn't, could was he? half a second quicker than Bagnar. Here is Bagnar, who looks absolutely crestfallen and baffled as to what had happened on that Ducati. It's very rare that we see someone lose the rear like that coming through turn one. We've seen a few lose the front. He should have third place under control if he can get into his rhythm and stay clear. Not close enough, as good as he is on the brakes, he's not close enough to make a real move. But his last lap around was 48-0. Of course, he was busy overtaking. Looking like he's putting together another really strong leg showing here. He's now going to get close to Fabio Quattararo on the brakes going into Stowe Corner. Quattararo can't find a way through on Alex Rins. He's under attack oh. now. Eka Bagnaia has the race lead. He's about two tenths clear of his second place on the inside. That was a move he had to make. He had to make that move at this juncture of the race because he was running out of time to hunt down Bagnaia ahead of him. The move came at Village Corner. Difficult to know where to look. No, he does need to try and look at what's ahead of him, but also what's coming from behind. He's picked away through now the fast fading Alex Rins, who seems to be struggling with grip late on on that factory Suzuki. Miller's got a key role here to protect his teammate. We talked earlier whether there were be any team orders but Miller has got to try and protect Pecco Bagnaia's lead by his asymmetrical Ducati with some winglets missing on the front of it he managed to get past Fabio Quattararo and there will be no response this time from the reigning world champion who thought he'd be fighting for victory even with his long lap penalty he's now out of the top six trying to pick up some slipstream whenever it hasn't a trillier out dragged the Ducati down a long star for his friend here we go though Brown it's lap 20 couple of laps later and it's the exact same carbon copy move Bagnai, what's his advantage? Still 1.2 seconds. I just wonder now with the Fabio Quattro is thinking this is a really valuable 20 points. I've, I've tried everything to make Pekka Bagnai crack. It hasn't happened this time around so far. And Bagnai has resisted the pressure. And Quattro knows these. Getting on board and left hand side of your screen with John Zarco. You can see him closing in on Marco Benzeki. We could have a change soon for fourth place. Benzeki very, very good on the brakes though and holds on to fourth place. Run against nine Ducatis he was facing coming in Grand Prix weekend. They're going to be like gold for Quattararo. Brilliant job by him and it would increase his lead the world champs with a race spider on course to get another third place. Back of turning, which is normally a real strong point of the Yamaha. He's had a lot of understeer through some of the chicanes. You don't need understeer through some of these rapid change of direction. Clearly found something that's given him more front end feel, more turning performance on that Yamaha. The series in third place is closing it now. We've been through our BR to one and two. Looks like he may all be lining up a move here on the plate. Straight away he's gone for it. What a time to ride on board with Quattararo. Down the hill into Scarperia. Up into second place. What a 20 points this would be for Fabio Quattararo. Of course it would be increasing his lead in the World Championship as it stands right now with the latest Spyro, his nearest rider in fifth spot. Right, but Fabio Quattararo, clearly the only rider capable of running at the front. A load more World Championship points thrown into the gravel trap by Enea Bastianini. Yeah, he's losing vital ground in the chase for the title, so if he can hold them off here, he should have third place under control if he can get into his rhythm and stay clear for around a second and a half up ahead to Fabio Quattararo. Bagnai, what's his advantage? Still 1.2 seconds. I just wonder now with Fabio Quattararo is thinking this is a really valuable 20 points. I've, I've tried everything to make Pekka Bagnaia crack. It hasn't happened this time around so far, and Bagnaia has resisted the pressure. Talk about the move of a world champion. That was opportunism from Quattararo. We didn't have that down as a potential overtaking spot, but what a move that was from Quattararo. And then he really had to break as late as he dared into the turn three. His teammate is the man who brought those yellow flags out. So contrasting fortunes at the chicane for the two factory Yamaha riders. But Quattararo had to really get his elbow. Ducatis cannot pass him down the straight. Fabio Quattararo in the championship. Quattararo though once more. And he could get more because he's really building for pressure and momentum. He's had problems in breaking zones here as in Austria has in the past. Don't forget 2020 when he had brake failure on the Yamaha. He had to jump off at about 140 miles an hour. Quattararo, Quattararo is fighting like a lion. Has he got some kind of braking problem? And that's cruel in the extreme for the Italian. His first pole position in four years. And he looks so, so good in terms of his race pace as well. Paco Bagnaia, is he going to get in a little bit hot? 
Bagnaia just comes straight back on the inside on the cutback. Oh, oh, oh that's Mia down. Mia's gone down again. Juan Mia's horrendous 2022 just goes from bad to worse. That's a six DNF now in the last nine races for the 2020 MotoGP World Champion. An early battle for Mia. A real threat around this circuit as well. So Mia out of contention, but the threat from Fabio Quattararo is coming from his former teammate. A gap already emerging up ahead of him to the Ducatis. Low podium so far this season, and it's another DNF from the copy book. Into slow glory goes on that factory Suzuki. He tipped it in. That went brilliant, didn't it? It's very really similar really to the crash that Zarco had on Friday morning. Yeah, you could just see it was never really settled, was it? Looked like he was running a little bit offline. He, he stayed committed, it wasn't going to happen in the Austrian factory, no question. But surely not, he's going to make it four consecutive third place finishes here in both GP. He won't care because this will keep him firmly in time for contention. It will be another podium, a first podium in the Premier Class here, potentially for Aprilia. As it stands right now with Alessio Spargo, his nearest rival in fifth spot. Alexis Fargo then, surely not, is going to make it four consecutive third place finishes here in both the GP. He won't care because this will keep him firmly in title contention. It will be another podium, a first podium in the Premier Class here potentially for Aprilia. Fernando Alonso, Formula 1 legend, I'm sure he's loved it. But down into the penultimate corner comes Paco Bagnaia. It looks like it's going to be a fifth win of 2022 for him. Seventh heaven for the Catti. Magnificent seven wins for the Bologna factory here in Austria. Paco Bagnaia wins at the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg in 2022. Fabio Quattararo, brilliant by the world champion.